Welcome back. Well, our routine day already um, turned out to be not quite so routine. Because Jesse Baines is coming back to Lytton for retrial. But um, that's not really our concern right now. Anyway, let's take a look at the computer. This desk is used for the computer, which is shared by everyone in the office. It's a Sierra model computer. I didn't know they made computers. Actually, they don't. Turn it on. Okay. Um, this is a very simple uh, computer, actually. It has only two commands. Dir, to give you a directory listing. And CD, to change directory. Let's look in the criminal directory. It has four subdirectories. Homicide, vice, burglary, and firearms. Let's take a look at homicide. And we need a password. Well, it's one of the passwords we found on Captain Hall's desk. And it's actually ice cream. And here we see a list of various names related to homicide cases. Some of which we know, like Jason Tacelli, who was murdered by handgun by Jesse Baines, as we know. But there's something weird here. It says deceased September 9, 1986. And if you remember the dates from the original game, it was actually 1983. For some reason, this game can't seem to decide whether or not the original police quest took place in 1983, 1986, or 1987. So you see various references to each of these three dates. You also see a reference to this game being either in 1984 or 1988. 1988 is the year it was made, and 1987 is the year that the original police quest was made, but the dates in the game, in the original game, set 1983, so that's when it took place. Meaning that logically this should be 1984. But apparently half of the development team forgot that when making this game, so we're in, we're, we've, uh, we're, we are, we're left with um, these inconsistent dates in this game. Anyway, Jason Tuscelli, we know him of course as Marvin Hoffman, or Leroy Pearson. We arrested him, and he had a flower tattoo above his left nipple, how can we forget? At the time of death, sub under investigation for suspicion of murder, auto theft, and narcotics. We also know Lonnie West, who's the guy who was murdered in the green sedan by Jason Tuscelli. And he was arrested, apparently, before his murder, for sale of narcotics. And at time of death, sub under investigation for drug trafficking. And Jesse Baines, who is now coming back for retrial. Whose full name is apparently Jesse Hiram Baines. And his alias is Frank Sloan. No middle name. That's, of course, the name he used when we were playing poker with him. And he has a scar on his chest. Probably from where we shot him. And here we see a date of conviction that claims that Police Quest took place in 1987, even though it didn't. And he was arrested for murder, attempted murder, narcotics, and gambling. And incarcerated currently at State Penitentiary in Folsom for 97 years. Unless he get let off, let off by the retrial. Of course, we'll do everything in our power to prevent that. None of the other names here are, pr are familiar, so let's go back into the criminal directory, and this time go to... Vice. We need another password here. And it's Miami. Get it? Miami Vice. Oh, these game developers are so funny. <laughs> and there are more familiar names here, like Victor Sims, who we arrested in the park for sale of narcotics. And he was convicted in 1983, which is actually the correct date, at the juvenile court. But his sentence was suspended, apparently. And Donald Colby. Who we also arrested for sale of narcotics in the same park, at the same time of Victor Sims. And again, it says 1983, so at least that's consistent. 
and his sentence was suspended because he turned state's witness, provided testimony in murder trial against Jesse Baines. And he has been relocated under the state's witness protection program. Let's see, anybody else we know here? Why? Marie Wilkins. That sounds familiar. It's Sweet Cheeks, the prostitute who helped, it at the, helped us at the end of the ra uh, last game and who had a crush on us and who is apparently now our good friend and probably more. And she lives at 222 West Peach in Lytton. And her date of birth is February 14, 1953, Valentine's Day. Wait, wasn't Helen Hotz also born on Valentine's Day? Well, I suppose that's possible. Uh, she was arrested for solicitation, but let off because she provided assistance for Lytton PD in undercover operation leading to the arrest of murder suspect Jesse Baines. Of course, she helped us establish our alibi. And Woody Roberts, he was the bartender at the Hotel Del Foria. He was arrested for illegal gambling. Again, 1983, the correct date. And his sentence was suspended because he turned state's witness, provided testimony in murder trial against Jesse Baines. Good. Let's take a look at the Sierra directory then. No password needed here. And it's a whole bunch of Sierra games, and it's all just promotional material. I'm not going to read that. Let's look at the personnel directory. Oh, no. Password for the personnel directory is Pistachio, the only one we haven't used yet. And there are various co-workers of ours here, like uh, John Dooley, our former boss, who we already seen works for narcotics now, as it uh, confirms here. He had a commendable citation. Officer Dooley was instrumental in breaking up the largest auto theft ring in the history of Lytton. Dooley arrested six suspects and recovered ten vehicles that were still outstanding. Uh, Laura Watts, she was our partner in narcotics in the previous game. She's retired now, apparently. And she has some commendable citations as well. City of Lytton experienced unusually heavy rain, resulting in mudslides and road closures. While working traffic division, Officer Watts moved into an area where commuter traffic had come to a stop. Officer Watts's professional and independent action was successful in diverting traffic into to an alternate route, which cleared a potentially explosive situation. But this is interesting. Sanctuary Report, 1984. Being caught red-handed, making chicken tracks across the top of Sergeant Dooley's desk with a rubber stamp. This brought to light the true identity of the infamous Gremlin, who went about antagonizing Sergeant Dooley. So it seems Laura Watts was actually the Gremlin who put that chicken on Dooley's desk, and who put mace on the note that we'd been transferred. Okay, who else is in here? Keith Robinson, our partner. Homicide detective, and he got a commendable citation in 1981. Superior effort in traffic management at the scene of a double fatal chain reaction collision on Lytton Freeway. Officer Robinson's uh, action quickly brought the scene under control and prevented further tragedy. And Fletcher Hall, that's our captain. Best commendable citations for outstanding investigative methods used in bringing about the arrest of mass murderer Slinkert Plink Pinkton. The hell kind of name is that? And he has a sensual report in 1985. Failure to pass required physical performance test due to excessive consumption of ice cream. Okay. Sonny Barnes, that's us. And we have commendable citation for in 1988. While working narcotics division during 1987, Officer Barnes received the key of the city for his effort in the arrest of drug king Jesse Baines. Due to this effort, Baines was convicted and sent to prison for murder, drug trafficking, illegal gambling activities, and attempted murder of a police officer. Namely us. But now he's back for retrial. And we see that this file, again, says 1988, even though that should be... Uh, or 1987, even though it should be 1983. One final file I want to look at... Uh, is Lloyd Pratt, the guy we saw in the narcotics office, who is apparently our old friend. And he got a Medal of Valor in 1973 
for uh, Officer Pratt was wounded in the line of duty while coming to the aid of a critically wounded officer who had been hit with gunfire from heavily armed fugitive. Pratt, after being hit in the right leg, returned fire and mortally wounded the suspect. He also got commendable citation in 1976, risked personal injury saving a small child from burning vehicle. And in 1978, performed CPR, saving the life of a 45-year-old heart attack victim. Sounds like a model officer, but then he has a censurable report, December 24, 1981, for insubordination on Christmas Eve. Maybe he was drunk. And then confidential internal affairs department is apparently having an investigation on him for on-duty drug consumption. That's not good. That's not good at all. Interesting information nonetheless. We'll continue in the next video.